everyone. I'm me, and today we're convened here to talk about why pine cones are offensive. Can I help you? Hello, my dudes. I would like to start off this video by apologizing for not posting a video yesterday. I'm sick. I've been sick for the past four days. I sat beside a certain someone in a certain class who had a certain sickness, and now I'm sick, and you know, I'm not gonna call anyone out. They know it's their issue. I'm mad about it, I'm salty, and I'm petty, but we're not gonna talk about it. Anyways, on to the video. This week on Joanna Loses Her Mind for the 50th time, I'm tackling a Van Gogh painting. If you're new here, I did paint the Mona Lisa approximately a month or two ago. It turned out okay. There were definitely a lot of things wrong with it, but there were some things that I did well. So without further ado, let me tell you how I painted a starry, starry night. The story begins last Friday at around 9 p.m. I started where most rookie painters begin, sketching out the proportions. I first started by printing out a photo of the painting, but here's the problem. I'm gonna try to explain this as easily as possible, so be prepared to put your brains together for for just a moment. The canvas I'm painting on is not the same size as the original canvas. The ratio between the length and width on the original is approximately 2 to 3, whereas on mine it's around 3 to 4. So it was pivotal that I reshaped the original image to have a 3 to 4 ratio, or else the painting would end up looking like a nightmare Photoshop job done on Microsoft Word. So I did that, but for some reason, when I printed it out the first time, the ratio was 4 to 5 and not 3 to 4. Of course I didn't realize this until I was finished drawing maybe the fourth or fifth star, and when I found out that Van Gogh had caught me with my pants down, I was a damsel in distress. So I printed out yet another photo of the painting, erased all of my sketches, and started again. If you're wondering how exactly I went about drawing the proportions, let me explain. The photo I was using was about four times smaller than the canvas I was painting on, so all I did was measure the relative distances between any item on the painting and the border of the photo, and then multiply that number by four so that it corresponded with the size of the canvas. Did that make sense? I don't know, but it worked, so I hope you understood it. Hello, my dudes. So it's around 11 p.m. I finished drawing the stars. I think I'm gonna call it a day right now because my parents are already asleep and I kind of want to go to bed like really badly. I think what I'm gonna end up doing is draw the proportions as I paint the photo. I'm not entirely sure about that technique yet, but we're gonna see what happens. What? That's it for today. I'll see you guys tomorrow morning for the Van Gogh battle. Nerf guns optional. Anyways, good night. It was 7.30 a.m. on Saturday morning when I woke up. I had stars in my eyes. Get it? Because the painting has stars. Okay, whatever. I ate breakfast and also put my shirt on backwards. It took me a full 15 minutes to realize it, but that's besides the point. I then got ready to start painting. I set out my paints, got my brushes, and poured out the solvent. I was ready! And then I started painting. I think the most beautiful thing about Van Gogh's art is how free he is with his brush strokes. I didn't try to blend out the colors too much, and I think that, for the most part, it worked in my favor. I also have to admit that the process was very therapeutic. Not having to worry about the painting being perfectly blended was incredibly liberating. Hello. Oh no, the camera's crooked. Okay, hi. So I've been painting for about like two hours now. My palette looks like a Smurf had explosive diarrhea all over it. Not gonna lie, the sky is looking okay. I could have definitely done worse, so I'm kind of happy with it. I've come to the conclusion that I'm also gonna do the background first before I add in the stars. But yeah, other than that, things are going well. Something that happened and that I'm kind of mad about is that I did burn my bread. I was toasting it. It got a little sister sizzling in the oven, so it's kind of burned now. I probably shouldn't be eating on my painting, but it's just part of the process, you know? Anyways, I'll see you guys in a bit. And then not much happened. I painted and painted and painted. At 3 p.m., the monster in my stomach started growling, so I had a snack. On the menu, watermelon. Fun fact about me, I absolutely abhor watermelon seeds. Why? Because I have some irrational fear that I will get pregnant with a watermelon in my tummy. So I'll sit there for hours with my surgeon's tools, picking out seeds one by one. Not gonna lie, I'm really good at this seed extraction process. No seed outsmarts me. Welcome to my TED talk. So this is what I finished after one entire day of painting. We only have the stars left to go. It's almost 9 p.m. So I want to finish this as fast as possible. For this part, I'm gonna use every single shade of yellow I own and a butt ton of white, and hopefully it ends up looking sort of presentable. So anyways, let's just jump right into it. And with that being said, I painted the stars. They looked like little yellow boobs floating in the sky. YouTube, don't demonetize me, please. The only problem with this was 
that it was already late at night and I was starting to feel the effects of painting all day. So a good old friend called Procrastination jumped in and decided to take control for a bit. I found myself watching old Dance Moms clips instead of painting, which is just absurd in itself since I never took any interest in Abby Miller's shenanigans. Hello ladies and gents. So I finished the sky. For today I'm done because I'm just too tired to keep going. We'll finish the rest tomorrow. I think we've made a lot of progress though. I'm, I'm pretty happy about it. So yeah, that's all I have to say. Eat your vegetables, wipe your butt after you poop, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Toodles. The next morning the panic really started to set in. I woke up and did not waste any time getting into the painting. The only things left to do were the mountains and everything in the foreground. Sounds simple, right? Yeah, it should be. But for some reason, this step took so long. It was never ending. I was exhausted and I'm pretty sure it was just mental exhaustion, but I was extremely over this painting already. I lost the battle before I pulled my gun out. And that is where my greatest downfall lied. It took me half the day to finish this brown turd on the left side of the painting. And don't get me started with the city along the bottom. My God, talk about perseverance. Not to toot my own horn here, but I was taking a break after every three minutes of painting. Now that that's stamina. In fact, I did just toot my own horn, thank you very much. It's been tooted, get off my horn. Aside from my impeccable work ethic though, some other things did happen. I realized how much I loved the color phthalo blue. I really like it. You should eat it sometime. Tell me how that goes. Also, I grew an appreciation for the tripod I was using. <laughs> okay. Stay with me for one second. I bought this pink overhead tripod off of Amazon a couple weeks ago and it's very pretty. Was it an unnecessary purchase? Maybe. I could have easily perched my camera on a stack of my dad's textbooks, but we're all about professionalism and sophistication on this channel. Am I right, ladies and gents? Eventually, after lots of blood, sweat, and tears, I finished the painting. Needless to say, I was very relieved to be finished. Relieved but also trashed. So the only thing we have left to do now is talk about the painting. I have a couple remarks I would like to share with you, so let's begin. So at the beginning, I was quite unsure about how I would render this impressionistic style. And halfway through painting it, I realized that the best way to do so is probably start with the darker colors and then add the lighter ones on top to create that contrast. That's probably why there isn't too much contrast up here where it's supposed to be darker, but this has some nice gradation throughout. Number two. I should have done an underpainting. After doing some research, I found out that Van Gogh's original is actually painted on a gray tinted canvas, and this is just a white canvas. So if I had done that, it probably would have changed the undertones a lot better, and it wouldn't have made it look so bright. I feel like Van Gogh's isn't that bright, but maybe it's just me. And finally, I would like to comment on something I think I did well, since the entire internet absolutely crucifies me every time I'm negative during one of these videos. In my defense, you know, I like to say that we're all our own harshest critics, but to each their own. But that's besides the point. I think I painted this turd pretty well. I'm not really sure what it is. It looks like a brown fire or a big tree, you choose. But I think I actually gave it some dimension, which I thought I would not be able to do. I don't know if you can tell through the camera, but I I think it's actually like pretty decent. The sky looks pretty good too. One thing I would change is probably the city down here. It's not as like free and impressionistic as Van Gogh's. Anyways, ladies and gents, that's it for this week. I'm so sorry this video is late once again. I'm just too sick and I could not bring myself to finish editing this video yesterday. So, but yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you had fun. I hope this, uh, this made your day. Probably didn't. Probably gave you lots of anxiety, but hey, what doesn't these days? Anyways, love you guys the most. I hope you have a good day, and I'll see you guys in the next one.